In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are not to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by all we have done and by all we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us,
Spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We are debtors, 
not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit, very witness with our spirit, that we are children of God, and as children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider this, that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who has subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will attain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grow, grow inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it in patience. Here it is. Remember 
at all the question I asked last week about seeds. You went on vacation. Wow. How was your vacation? Great. Maybe I won't take time to ask now how your vacation was, but I would love to hear from you how you enjoyed your vacation. Someone's got a little brother. <laughs> yes. And we are all happy. Today, I want to ask you, is there a fruit you can name that you just love? You like a fruit? You like a fruit? What about you, Andy? I do like a fruit. You like a fruit? What fruit do you like?
We pray that you would tune the frequencies of our hearts just now so that we listen to your still small voice speaking to us. Still the anxieties, the fears that surround us at any given time. And let your peace reign in our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Grace, mercy, and peace from the triune God be with us all. Amen. Let us connect immediately with what we heard last week. The parable of the sower. The parable of the sower where Jesus explains what happens when seeds are sown but when there is no appropriate environment for that seed to grow, some seeds fail, fall, and they fail to yield any fruit, but some do thrive, and they bear fruit a thirtyfold, a sixtyfold, a hundredfold. The disciples are a bit confused because they cannot connect the dots. They have to ask Jesus for an explanation. And Jesus does provide the explanation. Where the Son of Man is the sower of the seed, that word of life. The soil is our lives, our hearts that receive the seed and once they are caught in the struggles of life among the thorns, lack of nutrients, lack of water, we find that there is no proper environment and the seeds fail. When Jesus shares that parable of the sower, seed and soil, there is that continuity between that parable and today's parable of the weed and the wheat. And in the coming weeks again, we will hear parables connected to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. A teaching moment here. Matthew's gospel alone talks about the kingdom of God in these very distinct parables in the 13th chapter of Matthew. So Matthew 13 stands out. You have Jesus explaining about the kingdom of God using familiar examples. The kingdom of God is like that merchant who went in search of that fine precious pearl. And when he finds it, he is ready to give up everything else in just for the sake of that one fur, that one precious jewel. The kingdom of God is like that. It is like that man who went and found treasure in the field. And when he knows the value of that field, that treasure, he is ready to sell everything he has just to get that. Now Jesus is so clear in explaining to the people in different parables all about the kingdom of God. What does it mean for people to grow up to learn this language of love? Last week I said Kingdom of God, how Jesus explains is this. Jesus silences the 
the G and talks about kingdom. Kingdom of God has everything to do with kingdom. Relationship, love. This parable today is also about kingdom, about love, and about the grace and compassion of God. When Jesus talks about this parable, it sounds a little weird. Now why would that enemy go in the middle of the night and so weeds among the weeds? We do not ask questions like, what does it take for someone to have an enemy? Is there anybody in the room who doesn't have an enemy? Is there possible at all that we are surrounded only by friends all our life? It brings to the center the question, how are we valuable and valued by another? How do we in our lives add value to another's life? If somebody asks, who is a leader in this house? We can all put up our hands and say, I am a leader. It is someone else who has to testify that you are a leader, I am a leader by the way they experience our leadership. It is someone else, another person, a neighbor who has to say so and so is a good person. To be good or bad is not our definition description and identifying ourselves as I am very good. It is someone else who has to experience that kindness, those fruits of the spirit in us to say, to value us and say whether we are wheat or we are weeds. Weed does not add to the value of another's life. It does not, it, it can survive, it has life and that is why it grows. But the value of the weed is not the same as the wheat. The wheat enriches life. It is food. We need food for our daily lives, living for survival, for relationship, for companionship, for kinship. And the way Jesus explains this parable, we can possibly understand it better if we connect it with another parable Jesus says in Matthew 25, 31 to 46. When Jesus says, on the day of judgment, the Son of Man will judge and will separate the people, distinguish people, not by how they look, where they come from, what they did, but in terms of the value of life they either share with another or fail to share. Whatever you have done to the least of these, my brothers, my sisters, that you have done unto me. What you have not done, what you have failed to see, recognize, fail to recognize the image of God in the other one still alive that you have not done unto me. This parable where the master says let the weeds also grow along with the wheat. 
to give life. Share life. That is the promise, the presence, and the purpose of God. In a capsule. We forget that very often we can become the weeds in the lives of others. And we are busy identifying others as weeds. In that story, in that parable that Jesus says of a Pharisee and a tax collector. When we read that parable, where the Pharisee says, I have done this, I have done that. This is how much I give. This is my value in society. And compares the Pharisee with the tax collector who could not even look up, but said, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. How, how often do we read that parable and align ourselves with the Pharisee than the tax collector? Or vice versa. How many of us would be comfortable aligning ourselves with the tax collector and say, I am the tax collector and not the Pharisee? For us, God gives us opportunity. Several moments in our life, entire lifetime, to look critically within ourselves and repent of the weeds we have been, the weeds we continue to be in others' lives, or confess our vulnerabilities, our sinful nature. Pray for that spirit to convert us, to convict us, to indict us. Help us transform and give us that new life, new hope to be life, the bread, life-giving bread in this world. The psalmist says just this one line of prayer in that psalm we read today. Teach me your way, your own Lord, because I want to walk in your truth. Throughout history, God, the triune God, has given us this promise, this presence, this purpose in each one of us. May the Holy Spirit lead us in that way of life truth, justice, and peace, so that we may be fruit bearers, a thirty-fold, a sixty-fold, a hundred-fold. Amen. May the peace that passeth all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Amen.
trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the mountain of Pilate, but was crucified, dying, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again.
resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with sea and the earth and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Love and serve the 